Welcome back, my duelist friends. Casual duelist here, and it is Friday, so happy Friday. And also, it's time to end this week out very strong. Now, we did just wrap up three different variants of heroes. Uh, I do think, in all fairness, the first version is the most competitive variant. Uh, just focusing in on the Flame Wing Man and going for the game. But uh, I also wanted to show off that when we use the Palamonization, that older skills are not only just as viable as they always were, but can be even more so today. And uh, I wanted to end this week with something, again, kind of on the level of that Flame Wing Man OTK. And I wanted to give you guys a Bandit Keith update. So let's get into it. So real quick, the skill card is going to be the Spellproof Armor. Again, not exactly the world's most budget skill um, because this was only released in booster packs. So until we get a budgeted release, you might have to spend a few dollars to get this. The effect of this is going to be to activate the skill during the main phase. All machines that you control are unaffected by opponent's spell effects. Uh, you can normal summon machine normal monsters with one less tribute. And if a non-machine monster is in your graveyard, flip this skill over. This skill can only be used once per duel. So realistically, the big point here is to not have uh, non-machines in the main deck. And then once you have a non-machine in play, um, you better be going for game. Because if they do manage to kick that, it will shut off your spellproof armor. So that is that. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you guys a 20 card deck. And uh, then a 15 card extra, and then we'll talk about some side options. So, real quick, I'm reusing three copies Ally of Justice Clausalis. A uh, couple reasons. Uh, number one, it is a normal machine. Two, it is, I believe, the highest attack power normal machine single tribute. Uh, because, again, the Pendulum Machine does not quite get to the 2300 points that Clausalis can get to. And again, just, I mean, honestly, it looks cool. And we do have a searching spell. We are not using Allures of Darkness right now um, because we don't exactly need that level of consistency with this version of the build. Um, so I went a little bit different. Um, the biggest update card for this right now would be the next card, and that is going to be the Cyber Dragon again. Uh, I said this when we did the box opening. Uh, I said this again, I believe, when we were going over each individual deck. Uh, the Cyber Dragon itself is going to be leaking into so many of these meta decks right now. It is just like it was the first time around, just so important to card. And obviously much easier to obtain this time around. Uh, of course, we are going to tag in three copies of Jinzo this time. Uh, not that we didn't have Jinzo in here last time, but Jinzo cutting off the traps, spellproof armor making my monsters immune to the opponent's spells, means now you have to beat me by battle. You have to be able to overpower me or you're not going to win. And again, these guys, they're all big, beefy, uh, 21, 23, and 24. And again, normal summon, special summon, tribute summon. It's it's not very hard for me to get off my plays. We could special the cyber tribute straight into Jinzo. That's all fine and well. Uh, and these are going to be the nine monster cards for the deck. The rest is all going to be spells and traps. Yes, I'm actually using some traps today, so... Check this out. First card up, Cosmic Cyclones. This is going to help me take care of field spells. Again, I don't want to see the Skyscraper or the Dark City, and I know that the hero players are going to have those. They may have them in the sideboard. Um, I may not want to play up against some of the traps that are not going to activate during the battle phase. Uh, this is going to help me ensure that I get everything up and going. I tech in my single copy, Nobleman of Cross Out, because I, I, when I built this, I got to 19 cards really easy, and I was just mulling over what should be number 20. And again, if I'm trying to go for game as quickly as possible, being able to generate two huge monsters in one turn by being able to do special summon Cyber Dragon, then normal summon Ally of Justice, cross out. If the opponent does a uh, set monster end turn the way I would do with Volcanics with Blaster, this helps me power through. Um, and maybe even win immediately, just turn one. Um, next up, Summoner's Art. This just allows to make sure that I get the uh, Ally of Justice to my hand immediately. This get it, it, Like all honesty, the math ends up that uh, if you count these as extra copies of the uh, card that it searches, that means I have six copies of that monster. I, I can run nine monsters. I could probably run uh, six monsters and still be fine because of this. 
Uh, we are going to run three copies of Psychic Shockwave. Because again, battle traps are going to be very important right now. So uh, this, uh, this says when your opponent activates a trap card, discard a spell trap uh, to special summon a level 6 Dark Machine. That means we're going to go straight into Jinzo. We do have a way to special summon him. That's going to be amazing. And because I know Psychic Shockwave is going to be something that my opponent's going to be gunning for, two copies Waking the Dragon, because it wouldn't be a casual duelist deck if this wasn't somewhere. Normally, this is like a sideboard card, but it made more sense in the main deck. And even with Jinzo, we can resolve this, because it resolves in the discard pile or in the out of play. So it's not going to be considered a trap on field. Uh, going into the extra deck, because we can and should always have an extra deck, even if you're just bluffing, um, we're going to use Blue Eyes Ultimate. We're going to use Destiny and Dragoon. One copy of Jama King. One copy of Jama Knight. One copy Ryu Senshi. And one copy Thousand Eyes Restrict. So, real quick, that is the deck list. Um, let's throw the skill somewhere where you guys can see it. Screenshot, whatever it is that you guys need to do, make your notes. And then we'll go over the effects in the second half real quick. Let me thank you all for showing up. I hope that you guys enjoyed this week. Um, this was a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's been a minute since I was able to do anything with Speed Duel that was considered progress. So this set, awesome. I, I do hope to slow down a little bit, maybe only doing one or two of these a week now. Because um, I don't want to run out of fodder. I'd like to keep the Speed Duel crew coming back. And then uh, we got something coming up in the near future that may or may not be exciting. Um, I'm just going to allude to it for now. We'll talk about it again later. Uh, but you guys uh, do the things if you want to support the channel. Subscribe if you have done that. Maybe hit the notification bell. Keep coming back. Keep watching. And you guys have a great day. Everybody else, let me clear the field real quick. And then we'll go over all of these effects, all right? All right. So let's let's recap that skill just once. So again, you activate when you do activate this during your unmanned phase, it makes it so my machines are unaffected by the opponent's spells. And that I can normal summon Clawsless. Uh, without having to tribute. Um, if, for example, one of my extra deck monsters were to go to my discard pile, since they are all non-machines, then my spell-proof armor would be considered broken and I would have to flip the skill back over. So again, this takes out like one-third of the game when you're playing. Colossalus, again, big stats, big monster, 2300, great look. Uh, and again, it's going to be our normal summon for free. Uh, so very cool. Cyber Dragon should always be a special summon. Uh, really great to help lead the play and start things for you. And potentially could lead into an OTK if you get this. Uh, Clausalus and, of course, Nobleman of Crossout. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Jinzo, no traps on the field. No traps can be activated. No traps get their effects on the field. But it's only on the field. So this is how we're going to skirt through here. And we're actually going to be able to use Waking the Dragon. Um, so very important. Plus, we're going to be able to special summon him in a bit. The Cosmic Cyclones, again, just a little spot removal for the back row. Pay the thousand, target a spell trap, banish it. Uh, very important. Cross out, uh, target a face down monster on the field, destroy the target, banish it. Then if it was a flip effect monster, each player has to reveal their main deck. Then banish all cards from it with that name. So again, uh, not that it's going to be super like common, but again... Um, you will have a couple of players out there that are still going to have things like man your bug type effects, whatever. Uh, Old Vindictive Magician, I think, was the big one. Uh, just keep the Nobleman to cross out. Make sure that you've got the play. Uh, it's also one of the easiest cards to tech out if your opponent doesn't go to defense mode uh, at all because their deck just doesn't do that. So keep that in mind. Uh, the three Summoner's Art, these allow you to add a level 5 or higher normal monster from deck to hand which means that we can add an normal summon Clawsless with no tributes. The Psychic Shockwave is a trap to respond to traps. When the opponent activates a trap, you must discard one spell or trap, which is why we went trap and spell heavy. Uh, it's a special summon a level 6 Dark Machine from the deck, so we're going to be able to summon Jinzo. And then should be able to negate the trap's effect with Jinzo's effect, because it, now that he's on the field and it's on the field, it will fail to resolve. Um, so that's going to be fine. And it's going to let us walk through things like widespread ruin. Um, because again, remember, once they realize we're playing spellproof armor, they're going to, they're going to go to their sideboard. They're going to look for their traps. Um, and again, since they're going to want to get rid of those before we can activate them, 
we got the Waking the Dragon. So if this if this set card in its owner's control has left the field because of an opponent's effect and is either graveyard or banish, you may special summon a monster from the deck or extra deck. So again, we're looking for our opponent to waste their Cosmic Cyclones or their Night Beams on this. Um, and either way, it's perfect. Uh, Night Beam, a little more common these days due to the reprint or in the uh, Dual Academy box. But uh, again, two of these for sure. Uh, and again, for the extra deck, Blue Eyes Ultimate, largest monster in the game still uh, at 4,500. So one copy there. Destiny and Dragoon. We can actually play this. It says a fusion summon of this card can only be done with the above materials. But so do Rio Senshi. Uh, they do not state like the elemental heroes. This card must be fusion summoned. So we can special summon this off of our Waking the Dragons. So once per turn, we can target a monster our opponent controls, destroy it. And if it was face up, then we get to inflict damage to the opponent equal to the attack that card had on the field. Again, depending on what card that is, that could be the game right there. Um, it could. Uh, you cannot conduct your battle phase the turn you activate this effect. Um, and then the other effect won't uh, help us. But once per turn during the standby phase, if this was in your graveyard, you can special summon one destiny hero. Or sorry, banish one destiny hero from the graveyard to special summon this card. And again, better in a Destiny Hero deck, obviously. But uh, at the same time, uh, since we're playing him off Waking the Dragons, I don't think he would be able to resurrect himself anyway. Uh, the next two are the Ojamas, King and Knight. Use these dependent on how many zones your opponent has left. If your opponent leads with their Night Beam or their Cosmic Cyclone, and they have zero monsters on the field, please, 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 always go into your Ojama King, collapse all three zones that they have, Lock them out of their monsters. If they have one monster and they do this, go with the knight. Make sure that you lock up the other two. Try to go for a soft lock to punish your opponent for knowing what cards you're going to be playing. Uh, and it's awesome. Again, maybe you don't, uh, maybe you didn't get the uh, secret rare, but I just love the way it looks. So I'm going to keep using it every time I do a deck. Uh, again, Rhea Senshi. Um, when a normal trap is activated, quick effect, you can uh, pay a thousand life points to negate the effect. This must be face up to activate and resolve this effect. Negate the effect of any spell card that targets this card and destroy it. He's just kind of in here as a placeholder. You can place anything that you wanted here. Um, you do not need to go with Reascension. However, I would recommend it. He is a good card. Um, and there's going to be times where you don't have Jinzo face up already. So he's a good alternative. Uh, and then you do have Restrict. Other monsters on the field cannot change their battle positions or attack. Once per turn, target a monster the opponent controls. Equip that to this maximum one card that can be equipped to this. This card's attack and defense become equal to the monster equipped. If that monster would be face down, um, it would be zero and zero because technically it has no stats till face up. And if this card would be destroyed by battle, destroy the equipped monster instead. So very cool there. Um, no, I did not build an extra, or sorry, a sideboard today. But one of the cards I'm going to start suggesting, and I'm going to talk about this a little more on Sunday with this next spotlight, is going to be Defusion. Um, Defusion would work very well. Again, you guys could put Zone of the Spirit in there. Of course, it's going to clash a little bit with Jinzo today. Um, if you didn't want to run the Cosmic Cyclones, they could go in the side. You could switch out for Night Beams, depending on play style now. Um, Book of Moon still very valuable. Um, you could use Shrink. Um, you could also run your own Battle Traps. Um, we could use Michizuri. Uh, we could also use Widespread Ruin. Um, whatever you guys really like. Um, so again, it's kind of early. I'm still trying to feel out which decks are going to be top tier. I think this is a good start. I don't think this is where Spellproof Armor is going to end. But I do think that this is a great showing for the beginning of this meta. Uh, the beginning of this season for the Speed Duels. And I think this is going to be a good jumping off point for us. So guys, again, uh, thanks for watching. And additionally, if you guys have a deck that you'd like to see, maybe I'll, I'll bump it a little closer to the top of the list. And uh, Or if you guys want to submit your own decks, you could do that too. Um, and of course, if I like them enough, which I generally do, uh, we will go ahead and feature that on the channel and then i'll give you guys credit for your deck which is kind of cool i i like enjoying i mm, let me try that again i really enjoy seeing how other people build their decks too uh, mine is only one perspective out there 
It's just one point of view. And I think as a community, when we work together, we will get a clearer image of what is and what isn't. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, come back tomorrow. Tomorrow, not a speed dual deck, just a tech analysis. And uh, then we'll get back into speed duel for Sunday. So you guys have a lovely day and I hope to see you tomorrow. Later.